respectful dear children we were discussing about the temples you know north indian temples are generally small south indian temples are generally very big one reason for that right from 995 ad right from 995 ad the muslims from saudi area gasni gori kilji lodi timor for about 650 years the foreign muslims invaded and crushed the north indian temples destroyed as much as possible and that destruction can be seen even today in every north indian temple so the muslims can never support and they never supported idol worship so wherever idols are the i don't know whether it is mentioned in quran or whether prophet mentioned it if you are destroying the idol worshipers idolaters and if you are destroying the idol you will be reaching nearer to allah every day allah will be giving you the facilities to enter the heaven if you are destroying the idols and idolaters idol worshipers so north india nowadays does not have big temples but south india the muslim invasion was not that much up to andhra pradesh you can see vijayanagara samrajya temples are destroyed by the muslims mallikapur and others you can see in south india muslims did not reach to that extent so those temples are still remaining intact that is one answer another answer is that beyond vindhya mountains north india is known as punya bhumi jnana bhumi yatna bhumi and so on all our puranas and vedas upanishads were written in north india so it is punya bhumi all the avatars were born in north india so it is punya bhumi <coughs> since all the puranas and itihasas vedas written in north india it is also known as jnana bhumi so many yagas were conducted in north india so it is known as etnya bhumi also so in north india only mantras are enough in south india it is karma bhumi so mantra tantra and yantra are needed mantra tantra and yantra are needed so very big temples are needed then chola dynasty chera dynasty pallava dynasty pandya dynasty ruled south india they were fully concentrating on making huge temples thus we were fortunate enough to have different types of temple throughout india and you can see in the temples two type of worship are going on one worship offering to the fire second worshiping the idol offering to the fire is vedic ritual worshiping the idol puranic ritual vedic ritual is worshiping the divine power through offering to the fire agni kaadiya the other one worshiping the temple the second one is very easy quick anybody can do it but worship through the sacrifice in the offering to the fire that vedic mantras are ne- needed so it's a little bit difficult and in the temple i explained about offering to the god panja mahayajna i explained about panja shuddhi and today i am explaining to you eight words if possible remember it we are going to temple for listening Sravanam, Darshanam, Kirtanam, Smaranam, Vandanam, Archanam, Samarpanam, Sevanam. Eight Sanskrit words. This is Malayalam also is there. Every Indian language these words are very common. Sravanam. 
listening Bhagavad Gita, Bhagavadam, Ramayanam, the sound of the bell, the mantras, the Kshetra Vadya, listening, Darshanam. Just uh, seeing, watching and uh, worshipping the idol and the temple. Clean and uh, neat environment should be there for Darshanam. Kirtanam, whenever you are entering into the temple, chant the Nama or some Vishnu Sahasranama, Lirida Sahasranama or Mantras. So, Shravana, Darshana, Kirtana, Smarana. God is there everywhere. But for us to create an imagination, an image is needed. For imagination, for meditation, for concentration, an image is needed. So we are going to the temple for keeping that image in the mind. God is beyond that image, beyond that idol. But without something we cannot concentrate, without something we cannot meditate, without something we cannot perform our achara. So Sravanam, Darshanam, Kirtanam, Smaranam, Vandanam. You can do Vandanam like this. You can do Vandanam like this. You can also do Vandanam touching the forehead, nose and heart. So Vandanam. Remember Sravanam, Darshanam, Kirtanam, Smaranam, Vandanam, Archana. Something you are doing Archana, using flowers, using leaves, using coin, using turmeric powder, using kungum, anything you can do, using rice, akshada, you can do archana. Then samarpana, whatever you are getting from the temple as blessings or guidance, you have to offer back something. That is samarpana. In olden days, temples were the center of education. Whatever money the temple gets, Part of that is utilized for paying the salary for the teachers. And the temples used to have food reserve. Whenever famine comes, that food will be distributed to the poor people. And every temple used to have food and for those who are hungry, those who are going for long tour. Food will be available from the temple. Rest room also will be available in the temples. And Vahiyambalam, where you can take rest. And whenever the hot season comes, water and other thing, buttermilk will be available from the temple. And uh, the temples are the centers where hospitals, Dharma Shubhatri, hospitals for the animals and the human beings are functioning, were functioning, even today it is functioning in many places. So temples are not merely prayer halls is the capital of the village. A temple is the capital of the village and the idol is the king of the village. So where Sravanam, Darshanam, Kirtanam, Smaranam, Vandanam, Archanam, Samarpanam, Sevanam. It's a service center also. Temples are service centers for the hungry people, for the poor people, for the pilgrims, for the travelers and also for the animals, particularly suffering animals and human beings. It's an education center also. The temples used to act as the legal centers, like a court. All the problems will be coming to the temple and the village group will be sitting there in presence of the priest and the solutions will be given from the temples. The temples are not merely prayer halls, but completely the capital of a village for solving all the problems, for enriching each other, for cooperating and coexisting each other, where spiritual bit is also available, not only economical, not only financial, not only industrial. During the temple festival, you can see Variety of materials are brought there for sales. So commercial, industrial development, economical development, social development, psychological development, all these factors are aimed in the temple. Thus you should know that temples are not merely prayer halls for transferring the sin to the God. You cannot transfer your sin to somebody else because sin is not transferable as I told you earlier. 
so temples are socially intellectually economically psychologically spiritually sharing together curing together and existing together the temple concept is some of the wonderful concept existed throughout india there are lakhs and lakhs of schools were also running education centers were running under the temple guidance so you should learn about temples like this not merely as a religious or spiritual center thank you very much my pranam to you